بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد وبارك وسلم my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam Just a reminder for everyone that we do give opportunity for sunnahs to be performed after the speech, before the khutbah. If you desire to perform tahiyyatul masjid, salah two rakah, then if you can perform in the back of the masjid, because if you're performing right in the first saf, then I cannot start the speech. Everyone is waiting. So be mindful of that, inshallah. In any case, uh, the few minutes we have, inshallah, I wanted to remind myself and everyone that. In the summer months after the month of Ramadan, this is a time when we have many, many weddings in our community. And this is referred to as the Shadi season. Sometimes people refer to it as the, the season of weddings. <coughs> Particularly in the month of, in the summer months, but since Ramadan comes, that has been further squeezed. So there are so many weddings taking place uh, every weekend in our community. And a few points for us to remember regarding weddings is that of course, this is the sunnah of the Anbiya alayhi wasalam, the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us his permission in the Quran. فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ And this is the sunnah of the Anbiya alayhi wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً That we have sent messengers prior to you, O Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and all of them had wives and children. With the exception, of course, of Yahya alayhi salam, Hasuran min al-Salihin, Nabiyan wa Hasuran min al-Salihin. He was Hasur, he was unmarried, and Isa alayhi salam did not marry. Besides them, all the Anbiya alayhi salam got married. It's a great sunnah of the Anbiya, not only of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam, but of all of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a great form of ibadah. It is a great form of completing one's iman. فَلْيَتَّقِلَّهَا فِي النِّسْفِ الْبَاقِي the one who gets married has completed half his iman, let, his, let him fear Allah regarding the remainder half, the second half. But what happens is that unfortunately this moment of happiness, this occasion of happiness, this occasion of enjoying the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking Allah for, and being grateful for his blessings, we end up disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we end up flagrantly violating the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this has a definite impact on our married life and also even on the tarbiyah of our future children. It is mentioned by our elders that one person, he thought he was ahead of the game and he was very, um, uh, mashallah, th thinking about the future and he brought his young son around five, six, seven years of age to a sheikh and said that I brought him so that we could plan his tarbiyah and upbringing. So the Shaykh said that the tarbiyah has already been done. You are coming so late. You are coming and you are worried about the tarbiyah of your child now when he's already seven years of age. The upbringing and tarbiyah of your child began right from the time when you were selecting a spouse. What was your criteria for selecting a spouse? And how your wedding was conducted, how your nikah was conducted, how your walima was conducted. Was it according with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, or were you disobeying Allah at, on these occasions? This has a definite effect on the future of your child. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has said in a well-known hadith, تُنْكَحُ الْمَرْأَةُ لِأَرْبَعٍ لِمَالِهَا وَلِجَمَالِهَا وَلِنَسَبِهَا وَلِدِينِهَا فَاضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاكَ that women are married for four reasons. Some are married for their wealth, some for their beauty, some for their lineage and family, and others for their deen. So make sure you marry the one who has the deen. If she has other attributes, then nurun ala nur, or nurun ala nurun ala nur, and she has all four, nurun ala nurun ala nurun ala nur, that's great. But we cannot miss the nur of the deen. That is the first and most important condition. Otherwise, we will cry blood in this dunya and in the akhirah as well. The punishment and the adab begins right in this world and continues in the qabr and hashar and eternally in the day of judgment, after the day of judgment, for making the wrong choices. So we have to make the correct choice. 
at a very foundational level, a phenomena that is increasing, may Allah protect our youth, is that many of them are actually, forget about the level of religiosity and deen, understanding of deen. Many of our young men are opting to marry non-Muslim. Or, may Allah forgive, we cannot judge anyone, but barely converted Muslims. As far as the fiqh is concerned, like when we are asked, okay, perform the nikah, if the man, if there's a woman, she's a kitabiya, Christian or Jew, there may be some permission there. But even for, with respect to a man, if he says, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, then our ruling is that we are bound to as Imams, nahkumu ala zawahir wa sara'iruhum ilallah. We pass the ruling based on the external condition, and the condition in their heart is between them and Allah. We cannot judge anyone's iman and say, okay, you are ex- outwardly expressing the kalima just to marry the girl. You have no intention of leading a life as a Muslim. We cannot make that judgment. لا تقولوا لمن ألقى إليكم السلام لست مؤمنا تبدأون عرض الحياة الدنيا كذلك كنتم من قبل فمن الله عليكم فتبينوا These are different ayats in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala mentions about a campaign when one of the most vicious warriors of the kuffar side was dis- killing Muslims left and right but then when he was finally pinned down by a Muslim he said the kalima to save himself and the Muslim he was thinking he's just saying it to save his life and he continued on and finished the job this ayah was revealed that how dare you do that كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ you yourself were non-Muslim before Allah has favored you with iman and you cannot judge anyone so we pass we will perform the nikah we will say okay he's a Muslim but that is the end of our relationship with that issue. You as a girl who are marrying this man, you know in your heart and you have some level of wisdom and Allah has bestowed you with, you should utilize that and see that is this person genuinely sincere? If they are, that is so great. SubhanAllah, all of the Sahaba were converts, had accepted Islam. We have nothing against converts, so this is a very touchy topic. I don't want it to be misunderstood. But if you know that person has not studied Islam in the least, has not made any effort to learn the deen, has no interest whatsoever in the deen. In fact, might have openly said to you in many of your conversations when you were dating together that I really want to get married to you and if this is what is required, okay, I'll just do that so that we can get married if your father will not give permission and you want your parents' blessings. If this is what his own statements are, then you have to realize what type of person are you getting married to. The same applies on the men's side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا أَمَةٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكَةٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ And, وَلَا أَمَةٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ A believing woman is far better for you. Allah is saying in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكَةٌ is better than a mushrika, a disbelieving, polytheistic mushrika woman. And, Allah is saying, even if she is more beautiful, walau a'jabatkum, even if you are overawed and you are impressed by, and you're swayed by, or you're falling in love with the external beauty of that mushrika, don't fall for that. Allah Ta'ala says, ulaika yad'una ila nar These are such partners which are inviting you towards the fire. Allah mentions both, in fact. After Amatun Mu'minatun Khairun Mushrikatinu, Allah Ta'ala says the whole ayah, let me recite it. Wala tunkihul mushrikina hata yu'minu. Allah says, Do not marry your daughters to mushrik men until they believe. Wala abdun mu'minun khairun mushrikim wala wa'atabakum. And and a believing uh, male is better than a mushrik male, even if you are impressed with the wealth and with the talents and skills and position of the mushrik. And wala amadun mu'mina khairun mushrika. And a, and a mu'mina girl is better than a mushrika girl, even if you are impressed by the beauty of the mushrika. And then, in no clear, in very clear terms, uh, in a very simple manner, Allah makes a very sweeping judgment here and distinction between uh, these two groups. He says, "Ulaika yad'una ila nar, wallahu yad'u ila al-jannah wal maghfirah bi'idni." They are inviting you towards a fire, and Allah is inviting you towards jannah and forgiveness from His Father. Jannati wal maghfirah. Jannah and forgiveness. And his, through his father. This maghfirah is not because you earned it, it's from his father. And Allah clearly is mentioning his signs for people so that they may take heed and listen. This is a lesson for us. 
how can we uh, fall for the beauty and this is a sickness of the youth because many parents are coming and they have, they're saying we have Muslim daughters and they're not getting proposals no one is ready to marry them and many Muslim young men their fathers are coming and saying our sons are getting married to non-Muslim girls we are seeing this happening or sometimes remaining as a Christian because of the permissibility of marrying a kitabiyya and other times if they truly accept Islam that's great another person added to our ummah we are happy for that but in the cases that they are not accepting Islam and they are getting married while they are still Christian this is happening so we have such a culture where we are so fixated with external beauty and just in Ramadan in our etikaf we used to have the question and answer session some of the questions that came from the youth they were anonymous uh, they were very revealing about the state of the mind some of them were asking that is it permissible if you make specific du'as for guidance of um, particular models or some beautiful girls in our school, in our college? No. Particularly making du'a only for their guidance so we can marry them. So that means this, this, this young man is so infatuated with that, that that is the only thing on his mind. He cannot see all the beautiful Muslim girls that Allah has provided in the community. There are our daughters, our sisters, and, and he does not have any concern about them. Or nor does he have concern about hidayat of mankind in general, of humankind, of all men and women. Those that are beautiful and attractive and those that may be less so. We have to have the concern about everyone's guidance. Ya inni Rasulullahi Our beloved Rasul was, the, was sent for the guidance of the entire mankind. So this is the hypersexualized culture we are living in. So we have to make the tarbiyah of our men. And some of the fathers of the girls are becoming so desperate, they ask us, is, that, is it permissible for our daughters to expose their hair, to wear the most revealing outfits and makeup, go to mixed parties? Because if they don't do so, if they don't behave like the non-Muslim girls, then they're not going to get married. They may be super qualified, have very high education, and they may, but if they do not act like, because what's happening in the minds of these young men, they are only used to this type of beauty what they are seeing half naked beauty or revealing themselves these women who are revealing themselves this is what they are used to so what is happening and this is what they like this is what they appreciate this is what they enjoy now if our sister or daughter is wearing hijab and is modest then that's not appealing enough they're rejecting that so is it okay for them to do this the, the situation has become so desperate for many families na'uzubillah so we have to speak about this from the pulpit. It's our responsibility. We need to change our culture. This is one aspect of many things we need to change, but this is the topic for today. That we have to impress upon our children and our boys that the most important thing is Iman. And that which will save you in this dunya and the akhirah is Iman of your wife, and the a'mal of your wife, and the akhlaq of your wife, and the tarbiyah of your wife. If you are going to uh, forget about this, and completely relegate that to the last degree and not worry about it all, what will happen? First of all, your iman, you will go in your grave, she will go in her grave, but she, she will affect your children. We see that the role of the mother with respect to the raising of the children is something that right from the Quranic examples we can see. That when Asiya salam was such a pious and righteous woman, despite the father figure, being Fir'aun, the most accursed individual ever. What was the child? Who was the child raised in that home? Musa Kalimullah, the Rasul of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alayhi Salam. Musa Alayhi Salam was raised in a home because he had the training. Of course, his own mother, biological mother, also nursed him. But afterwards, he grew up with Asiya Alayhi Salam, who said, Qurratu Aini Li Walak La Taqtulu. She told Fir'aun when she saw him for the first time, this baby boy will become the coolness of my eyes, your eyes. Do not kill him. We will adopt him as a child. He will benefit us. And he benefited her. She became a mu'mina. She became one of the best women of all times. And on the other hand, we have Nuh alayhi salam, who is Najihullah, who is a Rasul of Allah, who is min al azam min al rasul the highest category of prophets. But when his wife was not a believer, when his wife did not accept Islam, then we have the son Kanaan, 
who despite the fact that his father is a prophet of Allah was not guided by Allah Ta'ala was not granted hidayah entire is a kafir ya nuh innahu laysa min ahlik innahu amalun ghayru salih fala tas'alni ma laysa lak bihi ilm wa nuh alayhi salam made dua to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala oh Allah inna ibni min ahli my son is from my family wa inna wa'daka al-haq you promise is true that you will save my family then Allah responded and said that innahu laysa min ahlik oh nuh he is not from your family innahu amalun ghayru salih he does not have righteous actions فَلَا تَسْأَلْنِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِنْ Do not ask me regarding things you have no knowledge of. إِنِّي أَعِذُكَ أَن تَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ I warn you that you do not be among the ignorant ones. Allah is telling Nuh alayhi salam. So the mother, we see that the father's role is limited. We cannot completely negate the role of the father by saying he has no role whatsoever, absolutely no influence. Of course he does. But, the role of the mother is far greater and superior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this understanding. So that we raise, on one side we raise boys who have their head screwed on right, understand the value of the deen. And on the other hand, we have to raise such daughters as well, who will become beautiful mothers of the next generation. Speaking of Asi alayhi salam, reminds me and I conclude with this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where he said, "Khayru nisa'il alamina arba'un." The best women of all times are four, and he mentioned two mimman kana qablakum, two from the previous generations, and two from this ummah. And these four women that he highlighted in this hadith, each one of them signifies or portrays or exemplifies, personifies one very outstanding trait. Four different women. They represent four beautiful traits. They had many, many traits, each one, but they excelled in one trait each that they are most known for. Two from the previous nation, he mentioned first one, Maryam alayhi salam, Maryam bint Imran, the mother of Isa alayhi salam. And her most outstanding trait was her haya, her modesty. And how modest she was and how she protected herself, her chastity, that even from childhood, she was kept in seclusion in ibadah. And we do not have time for the whole story of how when her mother was pregnant, she made that vow to Allah. Oh Allah, the, she was assuming it was a boy. She said, the boy that I am carrying in my womb, he, I dedicate for your sake to be an imam and an alim of Masjid al-Aqsa. But when she delivered the boy, the baby, it was not a boy, it was a girl. So, you know, she could have said, she should have said logically, Oh, وَلَيْسَ الْأُنْثَى كَالذَّكَرِ This girl is not like a boy. This girl is not going to become the Imam of Masjid Al-Aqsa because she's a girl. But rather, she re Allah Ta'ala reversed the statement and said, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى That the boy that you are seeking is nowhere near in rank to the girl that you have been given. وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ فَلَمَّا وَدَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي she said, oh, it's a girl. And Allah said, I know better what you have delivered. Not Oh, the boy you wanted is nothing like the girl you actually got. He's, she is far greater in rank than the boy you wanted. So she was, in the, she was doing ibadah growing up. Even when the angel comes to give her the basharah, of, uh, she said, قَالَتْ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ مِنْكَ إِنْ كُنْتَ تَقِيَّةً قَالَ إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَسُولُ رَبِّكَ لِأَهَبَ لَكِ غُلَامًا زَكِيَّةً She said, I seek protection of Allah. How a stranger you have come into my secluded place of worship. That's her chastity, her modesty. So we have to inculcate haya in our daughters. Number two is, Asiya alayhi salam, Imra'atu Fir'aun. Her outstanding quality is sabr ala al-masaib. Patience at the time of difficulties. She accepted Islam despite being the most beloved queen of Fir'aun. She ended up suffering tortures and had a final torturous death. And she called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَضَرَبُ اللَّهُ مَثَلَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِمْرَأَةَ Fir'aun. Allah gives example for believing a woman till the day of judgment of the wife of Fir'aun. إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بْنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ She said, Oh Allah, build for me a palace near you in Jannah. When a genie min Fir'aun wa amali, save me from Fir'aun and his oppression. When a genie min al qawmi al save me from these tyrants. Allah saved her and took out her soul. 
So no matter how difficult life will be for our daughters, whatever challenges they might face, if their husbands are not as kind for them, right? As kind, as chivalrous. You know, one, one particular parent, he brought some daughters and she was, they were saying that, you know, the reason we want to get married to this non-Muslim guy is because he actually opens the door for us of the car. He actually, you know, remembers us and give, buys gifts for us. They are literally impressed by this. So if, this Muslim, if your husband is not doing that, you know, he's a bad husband, but he cannot be as bad as Firaun. He may be bad, but he's not as bad as Firaun. Asi salam had so much sabr. So this is a quality of sabr. This is not giving license by any means for men to be like Firaun. Of course, I have to protect myself from being misunderstood. I'm saying on the sabr side, on her side, she can make sabr like the wife of Asiya and her rank will be elevated. And the third woman from this ummah is Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu anha. Her outstanding sifa is khidma and service to her husband. Such that Allah Ta'ala sent a salam upon her. Such that Rasulullah Sallam continued to remember her years, decades after she passed uh, passed away or years after she passed away and she passed away in the 10th year of Nabuwa and he continued to remember her after that and <coughs> Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi when Aisha Siddiqa Ardilana said Ya Rasulullah I am your young wife in your company why do you remember that old woman who died so many years ago he said that when I was uh, penniless, she supported me with, the, with her money. When I had no one to believe in me, she believed in me when everyone rejected me. And she gave me refuge when everyone else ex uh, kicked me out. And she is the one who supported me in the beginning. How can I ever forget her? So her khidma, she gave all her fortunes for the khidmah of the deen. That is the attribute we learn from Khadija anha. we need to impart in our daughters. And the fourth one is Fatima radiallahu anha. Fatima radiallahu anha, Sayyidatun Isai Ahl al-Jannah, Fatima bint Muhammad radiallahu ta'ala anha. Her most outstanding attribute is her zuhl, her asceticism, her taqwa, her ibadah. And this is something we need to inculcate in our daughters. To be like Fatima radiallahu anha, to have that ibadah like Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to work on these two fronts. And that we need to under, make our young men understand what is the most important quality to look for in a wife. And not to be impressed and fall for the outer beauty. And number two is to raise such daughters that will be beautiful wives and mothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us in the coming wedding seasons with all the weddings taking place in our community that we continue to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at these happy moments. We gain the pleasure of Allah and the blessings of Allah and we do not incur the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of creating more happiness and beautiful children coming into this dunya that will become a means of coolness of our eyes in this dunya and elevation of our status in the akhirah.